in 18th century France, there lived a woman whose life was so extraordinary that she became a legend. Join me as I tell the tale of the bisexual, opera singing, sword fighting arsonist known as Julie Dobney. Julie's story begins, as most do, with her birth. She was born in 1670 in Paris as the daughter of Gaston Dobney. Gaston was the assistant of the Count d'Armanac, who in turn was a master of horses for King Louis XIV. Gaston was a skilled swordsman and an enjoyer of nightlife, two qualities he would pass on to his daughter. Because Julie was his only child, her father gave her an education that was typically reserved for boys. Because of this, she learned to read, write and of course, how to use a sword. She excelled with a weapon in her hand and was the top of her class, despite being the only girl in it. It was during this time that she started dressing as a boy, a practice she would continue for the rest of her life. At the ripe old age of 14, she became the mistress of the previously mentioned Count d'Armanac. Said Count married her up to one of his employees, Jean de Maupin, to get rid of any suspicion and then promptly sent him to the other side of the country so they could continue their affair in peace. Not long after this, Julie fell in love with another man, a swordmaster named Serran. Her new lover accidentally murdered a guy in a duel, so they had to flee to Marseille, where Serran claimed to own some properties. While on the road, they earned money by giving fencing exhibitions. After a while, they added singing to their act. Despite having no formal training, Julie had a great singing voice. By the time they reached Marseille, it became clear that Serran did not own any properties in the city. She left him and put her voice to good use by joining the Opera of Marseille. It wouldn't be long before she found a new lover. This time, it was a girl by the name of Cecilia Bortigali. Cecilia's parents did not approve of their relationship, so they did what any loving parent would do. They sent her to live in a convent to keep her away from Julie. This did not, in fact, keep her away from Julie, because she had hatched a clever plan to break her out. Of course, when I say clever, I actually mean batshit insane. She laid the corpse of a recently deceased nun in her bed and then proceeded to set the room on fire. The idea was to make it look like Cecilia had died in the fire, so nobody would come looking for them. It isn't specified if Cecilia knew of the plan beforehand, or if Julie just showed up to her room with a dead nun in one hand and a zippo in the other. Surprisingly, this brilliant plan actually worked, and Julie and her girlfriend got there happily ever after. At least for a while. After a few months, Cecilia got homesick and the presumed to be dead girl returned to her home. When her somewhat surprised parents learned what had happened, they went to court and Julie was sentenced to death by burning. Despite her somewhat arsonistic tendencies, Julie was not a big fan of being set on fire herself, so she had to flee again. This time she returned to Paris. While on the run, she took some formal opera lessons. Back in Paris, she again wasted no time in finding a new lover. This time, the lucky guy was a fellow opera singer named Gabriel Vincent Thévenard. At least I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. I'm not sure, it feels like I'm at risk of accidentally summoning a demon every time I try to pronounce a French word. Thévenard was accepted into the Paris Opera and encouraged Julie to join him. Julie was down, but it was impossible due to the whole being wanted for burning down a convent thing. With some help of her former lover, the Count d'Armanac, she received a royal pardon and officially joined the opera. At the opera, she performed under the stage name Le Maupin. She quickly rose to fame for her ability to quickly learn her lines, her sword fighting skills and, of course, her singing abilities. One critic said that she had the most beautiful voice in the world, she even performed for a king on several occasions. It wasn't just her on-stage performances that brought her fame. Her turbulent past was the subject of gossip on the streets of Paris, and she would add a few more stories to her legend during her time there. On one occasion, she was offended by the son of the Duke of Luin. In response to this, she, of course, challenged him to a duel and stabbed him in the shoulder. A day later, she received an apology, and not long after that, they were dating. She also attended a royal ball while dressed as a man. At the ball, she kissed a girl that had drawn the interest of several attending nobles. These nobles did not take kindly to their new rival, and three of them challenged her to a duel. She defeated all three of them in quick succession, but once again had to flee as duels had recently been made illegal. This time, she fled to Brussels, where both her professional career and her love life continued in a similar manner. She continued to perform opera and became the mistress of a German prince. After a while, he found her a bit too much and offered her 40,000 francs to leave. She did leave him, but not before throwing the money right back in his face. She returned to Paris, where she received another pardon. 
This one was given her because of a loophole where the law supposedly only banned men from dueling. In Paris, she kept going as she had been. Among many other incidents, she bit off a lover's ear during an onstage performance, was arrested for physically assaulting her landlord, and threatened to shoot the Duchess of Luxembourg. So you know, the usual. After a while, she settled down and started dating Marquis de Florensac, who was at the time known as the most beautiful woman in France. This would turn out to be her most stable and long-term relationship as it lasted two whole years. When Florensac died two years later, Julie was devastated and retired from opera. She went full circle and spent the rest of her life in a convent, where she died at the age of 33. Thanks for watching, I've been Thomas and I hope to see you next video where I'll teach you how to get rich. Bye!